let's get into the meat and potatoes. Honestly, the goal of this is to obviously program my training for the next month, but to hopefully teach you or give you an idea of how to program for yourself. Pretty much a blueprint on how to not fucking overtrain yourself. So as I said, this will get into exact exercises, sets, reps, everything except rest times, but I will explain them a little. But first I have to start with what's called the mesocycle, which is laying out my basic plan for the month. So week one is what I've been doing recently, which is slightly less sprint plyometric and jump load because I am coming back from an Achilles to an opathy. I'll do one more week of two track sessions and one power gym session and one strength gym session. And then after these sessions, I have a two day break before I rinse and repeat into the next week. The two day rest is actually a bit deceiving because technically on the second rest day, I start off my week with an easy core workout, which is so easy. It's, it really is just rest. You know, you're just getting in a little extra core work that I don't like to do during my other sessions. So the second week is full swing back into it. It's three track slash plyo sessions, two gym sessions, and the track sessions consist of an Excel slash sprint workout, a plyo workout, and then a jumping slash technical jump workout. And the two gym sessions that are involved for that week is one is an 80% maximum gym session and the other is a full on 100% like strength session. Moving into week three very quickly, it's just the same concept, but when I get into the you know finer details of it, it's less volume, more intensity, and overall just more track and jump based. And then finally week four is a deload. I like to have a full week of easy training before I go back into balls to the wall again. And you know, it's different for every athlete. The newer you are, the less deloads you need. But yeah, I've found a deload once a month works really, really well for me. So now with our basic plan for how the month is going to go with our, you know, just what sessions we're going to do in rest days, we move on to what's called the micro cycle, which is just the fine details of each session, like how much rest exercise sets. It's, it's what you do per session. So I actually start with my Wednesday gym session because I find the gym sessions are easier to plan in my head. So I start off with a barbell warm up. I'm doing hand cleans and squats as my main two movements. My main movement being five sets of really intense work and squats being the main strength movement for that day. And then I move into some ab stuff, the wheel roller. I'll, I'll be showing these exercises on screen, I hope. Superman's is another exercise and then seated calf and tib raises as a superset. So you'll notice first up, it's not a heap of just like back to back to back leg smashing exercises. You know, it's one major movement I'm working on, which is the power movement, because this is a power gym session. And then the squats just for like mainly maintenance strength. Then the track session, when I was making this, there was a little bit of deliberating going on, but it's triple takeoffs, uh, five sets of three reps, and you know, the reps being three takeoffs during a triple takeoff run through. Um, then I do these pogos into accelerations. And then I finish off the session with three 20 meter flies. So already the session doesn't seem like a lot of work and it honestly isn't. It's all done at a very high intensity. The warm up gets me ready for a hundred percent force production. And in between each set are some long breaks so I can perform each rep at a hundred percent. And it ends up taking like an hour each session or like an hour, 20 minutes with the warm up included. The final two sessions of the week on the Friday and Saturday, the track session is just a high jump day. You'll see what I'm writing down here, like two to three minutes break between sets of jumps. And then the day after is just a pretty basic strength day. You know, I've got my explosive box squats, five sets of that. Again, three sets of my secondary strength lift, which is the remaining deadlifts. And then some core and some basic like uh, calf and ankle strength maintenance and like prehab movements so I just don't get hurt. You know, they're not at maximum weight every week, but yeah. So as I said, week two is slightly different where I'm doing three track sessions, but still two gym sessions. Oh, and obviously the core workout on the Monday. But the first track session is a basic sprint day or basically acceleration day really. It's a 10 meter excels, 20 meter excels, 30 meter sprints, and they're from you know, like a four point start. So even from the blocks, if we can get our hands on them and you'll notice the rest times, which is most important and the low amount of volume too. You know, it's when you're doing an acceleration workout, it's like you want from between 200 to 300 meters of like sprinting overall. I think I added that up and it's 200 ish. If I was just to guess and it's one minute rest per 
10 meters sprinted and then slightly longer in between each set of exercises. The gym work I do the next day is that 80% day where I'm trying not to completely fatigue myself because I want to do plyometrics the next day, right? So if you work out at like 80 to 70%, you will see even strength gains, especially as a newbie, but you, you will get strength maintenance work from it. And you can practice form too, which is super important. So do my power cleans from the blocks, five sets, that's the main exercise. And then squats as well for three sets. And they're at 80%. The next two exercises are what I call accessories. It's just back extensions and the calf and tib raises again, maintaining my back and core strength and also my ankle health. The last two sessions to complete the week, the Thursday track session is just a basic plyometric workout. I do these funky box plyos, which I'll show a video of because I can't explain them. I'll do some low hurdle hops and then some trickle five step bounds. And in the video, I'm pretty sure I add up all the volume, but it's like 50 to 70 intense ground contacts. You know, a lot of you'll be looking there and think, oh, it's, it's so low, but you really want that 100% intent. And the rest between each set of exercises is again, two to four minutes, whatever you need to get to 100% before the next set. And Sunday's a, a basic jump day. I feel like I don't really need to explain that. You know, you've got your three steps practicing form. It's more technical work for over the bar for me because I'm shit at that. And then some five to seven step stuff. And then after that session, I'll be going straight to the gym for my max strength work, which would be trap bar deadlifts. Again, it's like, you'll notice that it's a reoccurring pattern, right? Like you go to your main lift and you smash that out because the gym, when it comes to jump training, isn't complicated, right? You got your set lifts and doing over that is basically just detrimental. And the calf and tib stuff is very repetitive for me, but I really need it because that's where I always get hurt. It's where I've got had multiple injuries in the past. And yeah, I think my longest stretch recently was going like seven months without an ankle injury. The third week is the same format, but as I said earlier, it's that slightly lower volume and higher intensity in the sports specific movements. So start the week with my core stuff. Then the sprint stuff is doing slightly less acceleration work and more top end stuff. I could do six 30 meter flies. I think the volume, the sprint volume of the session is again between 200 to 300 meters sprinted that's around where you want to sit and I actually put in the rest to remind myself because I know with the longest sprints I'm a bit stupid and forget and then I just do some two foot stair bounds which is always nice to finish off a session and it's a low intensity plyometric the gym session becomes even more basic so I'm less fatigued for the workout the next day than the week before because the second week is kind of like your mad loading week and the third week is yeah again the sports specific week so it's just the hang power snatch, five sets of that, and then three accessory movements and back extensions, the hollow hold crunches, and again, the calf and tib work that I always do. And the final two track sessions, right? The plyo work becomes a full-fledged track workout. You know, um, I'm doing standard triple bounds into a pit, which is this exercise that I'll show on screen, six to eight step run throughs, just two of them to like mark my run up and get that going. And then six to eight step long jumps. And I want to do six to seven of those, right? They are very, very high intensity. They're very sports specific, but simply from reducing the length of the run up, I don't fucking destroy myself for the proper jump session on Saturday. Also a shorter run up long jump simulates the high jump takeoff more than a full run up long jump. Because when you do a full run up long jump, you're very quick off the ground because you have such a short amount of time to produce that force to go really far while in the high jump you're not running at max speed you know you're running in like 80 percent and this final jump session is progressing towards the end of the block and you know as the season draws near right i want to be getting back to more competition style jumps so the run-up's getting further back you know it's five to seven steps again trickling in so it's not just a standstill i'm doing a high jump run throughs the, the pop-ups that you'll see like brandon stark doing a lot and then, you know, it's a very intense competition style jump session with only like 10 to 12 jumps maximum counting the pop-ups. And then it's to the gym again for that hard gym session. But basically I'm just smashing out some really heavy box squats and into some more accessory work again. And then the final week is deload week where I've said before, you can basically do nothing, but I'll copy and paste a core workout because I'm a lazy ass and then I'll do a 50% track session so that's literally halving or more than halving the amount I do but keeping it 
intense. And then the gym session is literally a normal gym session but with the weights at 50% of what I'd normally lift. I've heard you can do 60% or 70% but uh, I know when I do that myself, it doesn't let me recover for the week like how I do if I do it at half. And overall, that's basically it, right? Like um, there is a formula that I follow and a lot of people follow for like how much you can do per week by, you know, you count your ground contacts, you count amount, amount of weight you're lifting. You need to have certain rest days off so your CNS can rest and you can rejuvenate for the next block. It's honestly pretty formulaic. And if you're someone who's been jumping for, you know, two years or a year, you can just jump into this and actually just use this exact workout. But, you know, everyone's at different levels. Everyone's at different parts of the season. Like I wouldn't be doing this during the season. It's a bit too much gym work and it's probably the volume's a little bit high. I don't give myself enough rest. This is off season work. And as I said, I'm also coming off an injury as well. But yeah, the main two weeks of this, I would probably repeat next month. Not completely repeat but something very similar and then it would change as uh the season draws near so fuck i hope this didn't drag the fuck on and you found it interesting but again if you want some free training just uh hit me up whether it be in the comments or instagram catch you next time